Breaking news right now on NBC2 News at, lo- at noon. We've just learned the second healthcare worker who is a nurse and has been identified as Amber Vinson by her family helped treat that Ebola patient in Dallas, Thomas Eric Duncan. But she not only tested positive for the virus, but we're learning that she took a flight before her symptoms appeared. So officials are now alerting the 132 passengers who were on Frontier Airlines flight 1143 from Cleveland to Dallas Fort Worth International Airport on Monday. The CDC now has a rapid response team in Dallas to handle the situation while 75 other healthcare workers who had contact with Thomas Eric Duncan are being monitored for symptoms. NBC's Jay Gray is outside of the hospital in Dallas with the very latest. Hazmat teams moved in before the sun came up in Dallas with word that a second health care worker has tested positive for Ebola. No one wants to get this right more than our hospital. The first to diagnose and treat this insidious disease that's now attacked two of our own. Officials will not release the name of the patient, but do say she was a part of the medical team that included critical care nurse Nina Pham, who was also infected, treating Ebola patient Thomas Eric Duncan, who died as a result of the virus. The women are part of a group of 77 healthcare specialists who had contact with Duncan, were identified by the Centers for Disease Control, and are being monitored right now. We um, are, are preparing contingencies for more And that is a very real possibility. In a conference call last night, union officials read statements they said were from anonymous nurses who treated Duncan. Were the protocols breached? The nurses say there were no protocols. Nurses said Duncan had contact with at least seven patients in the hospital, that initially they were not given full protective gear, that they had only optional training on Ebola, and that staff moved in and out of the isolation unit without being decontaminated. We're looking at every element of our uh, personal protective equipment and infection control inside the hospitals. We don't have an answer for this right now, but we're looking at every possible angle around this dangerous, potentially deadly angles that seem to be shifting almost daily. Jay Gray, NBC News, Dallas. Here in Southwest Florida, NBC2 gathering all new information right now on the drive-by shooting that left this little five-year-old boy dead in Fort Myers. NBC2 Sam Sweeney starts off our team coverage from where those shots were fired. Sam, and I understand they just raised the reward for information. Lisa, I learned in the last hour that this reward for the arrest and conviction of the killer, that five-year-old boy, has been raised to $25,000. Now, police tell me they've received dozens, if not hundreds, of tips, but much of that is hearsay. And they say, wow, that's great. Right now, they need someone to come forward who saw that shooting on Monday evening. If you did see that shooting, you can remain anonymous if you provide enough information to lead to the arrest and the successful conviction of this killer. If you do that, you will walk away with $25,000 in cash. Now, right now, the scene out here is clear. Investigators have left the scene, but they tell me if they receive any more tips, solid tips, they will be out here at a moment's notice. Reporting live in Fort Myers, I'm Sam Sweeney, NBC2. All right, thanks so much, Sam. We continue our team coverage in the Fort Myers neighborhood where Faust was shot to death and continues to mourn today. A memorial was started in front of his home around Andrew Faust's favorite bike. NBC2's Brittany Weiner is live there with new information on arrangements for his funeral service. Brittany. Good morning. Well, yes, that memorial continues to grow today for Andrew Faust around his bicycle, friends, family members, and even people who never even knew Andrew coming out to pay their respects. I'm going to step aside so you can see this growing memorial. Those red and yellow flowers right out in front of his bike were just dropped off this morning by a man who says he's never even met Andrew, but he says he has three young children of his own and he wanted to pay his respects to this young boy. Now the family is working on funeral arrangements for Andrew Hickson Funeral Home just around the corner from the house said the family came in yesterday asking for their assistance with a service 
for the young boy. They told me all the details of that service are still pending. Another funeral home has offered to cover all of the funeral costs if the family wishes to use them. I spoke with the owner of Mullins Memorial Funeral Home and Cremation Service today. He says he is a father of a three year old and he wants to help a family that is going through the unimaginable. Now, right now he is working to get in contact with that family to see if they would like him to use their or excuse me, if they would like to use his services so he can cover the cost and pay for Andrew's funeral. Obviously an unimaginable thing happening out here. A lot of people coming out here today to continue to pay their respects to this young boy reporting live in Fort Myers this morning. Brittany Weiner, NBC2. All right, thanks so much, Brittany. In other news, some good news to report. Cape Coral Police arrest a suspect in last week's Iberia bank robbery. This is the man they say did it. 45 year old Jose Benitez. Investigators piece together witness accounts and Crime Stopper tips to find Benitez. Here's a look at the SWAT team surrounding his house on Northeast 20th place. He's now facing numerous charges, including grand theft and robbery with a firearm. And NBC2 is working to find out how this car fire started overnight. We were first on scene and actually had to call 911 to report it. It happened right near Winkler and Fowler in Fort Myers. No word yet whether it's suspicious. Our crews on the scene say it appeared to be a light colored BMW. As soon as we get more details, we will be sure to pass it along. Charlotte County deputies are now looking for a missing endangered adult. 34 year old Katie Marie McDonald has not been seen since Saturday and she was last seen at her home in Port Charlotte. She may have a blue acoustic guitar with her. It was also missing from her home. If you have any information, call the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office. Testing the tests themselves. That's what the school board in Collier County wants state lawmakers to do. It's one of several recommendations to the state the board voted through last night. The idea comes from the Greater Florida Consortium. It's made up of Collier County and 10 other school boards. They say suspending testing for a year or two will give lawmakers time to make sure these tests really work and are the right way to assess Florida students. Hopefully we can get a message to Tallahassee that says let's go about to where we have a valid, reliable, agreed to system of accountability in Florida, which today we don't. All 11 boards in the consortium need to vote yes on this in order for it to move forward. If so, state lawmakers will consider it during the next legislative session. Now, Lee County sparked the education revolution. In September, district leaders gained support from 10 other school boards in South Florida. Next year, the education leaders will go to lawmakers asking for more flexibility to assess students. And speaking of Lee County schools, they are getting brand new school supplies. Distribution started at 10 this morning to more than 40 schools at the Harry Chapin Food Bank on Fowler Street in Fort Myers. You might have actually been a part of this. Just before school started, Publix conducted a donation drive at their local stores to collect supplies purchased by Publix shoppers. The Department of Environmental Protection and the City of Fort Myers are stepping in to clean Carroll Canal. It's in bad shape. So together, they're going to invest $1.7 million. That money is specifically designated for restoring the Caloosahatchee River. But since the Carroll Canal flows into the river, the canal is getting cleaned up as well. Well, I think it's fabulous. After all, that feeds into the Gulf, you know, Wonderful. and that's our tourism. As part of the project, crews plan to install stormwater treatment systems along Carroll Canal. Those include filter marshes and other water control structures. No word on a start date yet. But there's more trouble for Southwest Florida waters. One of the most important ecosystems is disappearing at an alarming rate. A new study finds a 9% decrease in the Big Cypress Basin over the last six years. The wetlands are critical in keeping coastal waters clean and wildlife healthy. Environmentalists met with concerned citizens just yesterday to discuss the importance of saving this land now before it gets worse. Uh, the quality of our lives is directly dependent on the health of our environment. I think you got to protect it for the future, for the future, not just for me. I think I'll see it and, you know, uh, who knows how long I'll be here, but I mean for the children and the grandchildren in the, in the future. The study blamed development on the decrease of wetlands. That also impacts the wading birds population. Right now, the EPA is creating a new rule to clear up any confusing language and hopefully help in the effort to save the wetlands. Another forum, by the way, is being held tonight at 630 at Harborside. 
Ahead on NBC2 News at noon, he's in jail, suspected of kidnapping and murdering a real estate agent. But now he's opening up from behind bars on what he says is and isn't true in relation to the Arkansas realtor's death. Plus, NBC2 takes you to the ravine a woman spent one day trapped in with the daring rescue all caught on camera. Certainly video you don't want to miss. Well, after quite the rainy start to the morning, the first alert live radar looking a lot quieter right now. Just got a couple showers that we're tracking offshore. The big weather story today is a cool front making its way into southwest Florida by the evening hours and tonight. And that's going to set up a beautiful stretch of weather for the second half of the week. We'll preview some of those nice numbers in your seven day plus the latest on Hurricane Gonzalo coming up in your first alert forecasts.